In this video, we're looking at raw development in Affinity Photo by processing this image. I'll also use it to highlight several common mistakes that new Affinity users often make. Right now, I've just opened Affinity Photo and it's showing the Photo Persona. This is the default workspace where most of our photo editing is done. One exception to this though, is the raw development which takes place in the Develop Persona. You can switch to the Develop Persona manually by clicking the Develop Persona icon at the top of the interface. But if you don't have an image open when you click it, you'll see an error message. This tells us that we need to have either a pixel or raw image layer selected first. So let's open a raw file and see how it works. The file I'm using is from a Nikon Z7 Mark II camera. If you want to try this for yourself, I'll put a link to the file on my website in the YouTube video description so you can download it. We can open the file by going to the File menu and selecting the Open command. This brings up a dialog box where we can navigate and select the file that we want to open. But let's close this because I want to show you an alternative method. Instead of using the menu, we can drag and drop an image from the Mac Finder straight onto the center of the photo persona. If you're using a Windows PC, you can do the same thing with the File Explorer. There's then a short pause while Affinity Photo reads the RAW file. Once it's finished, the file automatically opens in the Develop Persona. You can see it's the Develop Persona by checking the Persona icons at the top of the screen. Before we start editing, let's take a quick look around the interface. There are some fundamentals that you need to know. On the left, we have the Tools palette. Each persona has its own Tools palette, with tools specific to that workspace. These tools change depending on which persona you're using. That's because each persona is designed for a different purpose. Since we're in the develop persona, we see tools related to raw file development, like the crop and white balance tools. On the right, we have the adjustment controls, organized into panels that appear as tabs. These are called studio panels, and right now they're arranged into three groups. You can move these around to reorder them, which is something people often do by mistake. If that's happened to you, and your screen doesn't look like mine, you can reset the Studio Panels. Just click the Window menu, go to the Studio sub-menu, and select Reset Studio. We'll come back to what the individual tools do in a moment. First, I want you to notice the toolbar at the top of the interface. Mine has descriptions below the icon groups to help you understand what they do. You probably don't have this enabled by default in your copy of Affinity Photo. If you want to turn it on, just right click anywhere on the toolbar. Then in the pop-up menu, select the icon and text option. Now let's make some adjustments to this raw file and talk about mistake number one. That mistake is thinking that you need to use all the tools in the panel. Most of the time, an image only needs a few adjustments. We also need to break these adjustments into two groups. The first group includes corrections that we apply to every RAW file. These are going to be things like lens corrections and setting a color space, and they're usually the same for every file we edit. The second group consists of adjustments that help shape the image to look the way that we want it to. Let's start with the first group, the settings we want to apply to all RAW files. If we look at the Basic tab, we can see that the Exposure and Enhance panels are selected by default, but there are no adjustments applied there. Then the other panels aren't selected at all. Now one problem with this is that if I change something, like the Temperature slider, nothing happens. That's because the White Balance option isn't ticked. I always forget to tick the option before making my adjustments. Then, when I finally turn on the panel, I realize I've made a huge adjustment. And by the way, if you need to reset a slider to its default, just double click it. Let's fix the missing tick marks in the other panels now and ensure every panel is ticked. After that, I can save this setup as a new basic panel preset. To do that, I use the drop down at the top and choose Add Preset. I'll call this preset Default Raw. 
Now, whenever I edit a new RAW file, my first step is to select the default RAW preset from the dropdown. That then automatically applies all the options, including the profile setting. Now, the profile option is often overlooked, but it's important because it sets the color working space when we develop the RAW file and switch to the photo persona. I like to use a large color space like Adobe RGB. I don't want Affinity Photo to default to something smaller like sRGB. If you're not familiar with color spaces and want to know more, I did a presentation for Data Color last year where I covered this in detail. There's a recording of it on my website and I'll include a link to it in the YouTube video description. The next setting we probably want to apply to every RAW file is the lens corrections. You'll find this in the lens tab. For this image, you can see that Affinity Photo has already applied the correction based on the metadata in the RAW file. But if Affinity Photo can't determine the lens profile, you can always set it manually. And this brings us nicely to mistake number two, ignoring Develop Assistant settings. You can access these settings from the toolbar. If I click this icon, it opens a dialog showing several settings that are automatically applied in the Develop Persona. Some of these can make RAW development much easier. The first setting I want to look at is the default lens profile. Notice I have mine set to auto select. This is why my lens profile was automatically applied in the lens tab based on the RAW files metadata. You could set this to none or last used, but auto select saves you from doing it manually. Another setting you might want to change is the noise reduction. By default, Affinity Photo applies color noise reduction, but not luminance noise reduction. However, we can change this so that luminance noise reduction is also applied automatically. Affinity Photo will then estimate the noise level and apply a suitable setting for you. Which brings us to mistake number three, not checking the settings that have been applied automatically by the software. Just because the software makes an adjustment doesn't mean it's correct. You need to learn to trust your own judgment. For example, if we edit a noisy RAW file, the software might apply too much luminance noise reduction globally. This can destroy fine detail in the image. In that case, it might be better to reduce the strength of the noise reduction. We could then apply selective noise reduction in the photo persona, or we could even use dedicated AI noise reduction software in serious cases. Now that we've set up Affinity Photo to apply our corrections, let's move on to the other adjustments this RAW file needs. The most obvious one is exposure, since this image is overexposed. I can adjust the exposure by dragging the exposure slider manually, or I can use these up and down arrows to the right of the control. I personally often prefer using the arrows. Setting the exposure to minus one gives a nice result with this image. Even though the histogram shows some clipping in the highlights, the image still looks natural. That's because the sun is an extremely bright object, so some clipping should be expected. Which brings us to mistake number four, trying to fix all clipping. The histogram is just a guide helping you identify potential problems. It doesn't have to follow a strict set of rules. Instead, focus on how the image looks and use that to decide how to develop the RAW file. If you want to see what's clipping, you can turn on the warning indicators in the toolbar. When I enable highlight clipping for this image, we can see that only the sun and its reflection are clipping. Now that I've reduced the exposure, I can also see the image possibly isn't level. Now I could fix that in the lens tab using the rotate slider. But when I do that, it creates empty space around the edges of the image. To fix this problem, I would need to increase the scale slider to hide the white areas. Instead, let's reset that and look at using the crop tool from the tools palette. This includes a straighten option in the toolbar. After clicking and activating it, I can click on the horizon and drag a line across it. When I release the mouse button, the image rotates and the crop adjusts automatically to remove any empty space around the edges. 
Another correction that I want to make to this image is removing a small flare spot that's appearing on the beach. For that, I'll use the Blemish tool from the Tools palette. I just need to click once to apply it. Then if needed, I can manually adjust the size and position of the fix by clicking and dragging with the mouse. I can also reposition either the sample point or the repair itself in the same way. Now that the image is looking reasonable, I want to highlight mistake number five. There's a temptation amongst most photographers, especially those with an Adobe editing background, to try to finish the image in the developed persona. Please don't do this. The tools in the develop persona aren't really intended for that. What you should be doing is using the develop persona to produce an image that you can work with in the photo persona. That's where all the real power is and where you can transform the image. But before we take this raw file into the photo persona, there's one more mistake we need to highlight. Mistake number six is not using the output options when editing the raw file. Notice that there are three options, pixel layer, raw layer embedded, and raw layer linked. A lot of people have this setting set to the pixel layer, but the problem with that is it's going to bake our adjustments directly into the image, making them unchangeable. Instead, I prefer to use the raw layer embedded. This embeds a copy of the raw data in the image so that we can reopen and adjust it later. Let me show you an example. Now that the raw file has been developed with the settings we applied, the image is open in the photo persona. You can tell it's the photo persona because of the icon in the toolbar. Let's now add a curves layer to this image and use it to correct the black point. As I drag the black point to meet the histogram, you can see the image darken. Next, I'll add a layer mask to the curves adjustment by clicking the mask icon at the bottom of the layer studio panel. Then, I'll invert it using a keyboard shortcut to fill it with black. This hides the effect, allowing me to apply it selectively to the foreground beach using the brush tool set to paint with white. Now, let's say after doing this, I decide the exposure adjustment we applied in the develop module is too strong and the image is becoming too dark. If this were a pixel layer, we'd be stuck with it. There's nothing we'd be able to do about the problem. But since we chose the embedded RAW option in the output settings, we can reopen the RAW editing. All I need to do is double click the RAW layer. This reopens the RAW file in the develop persona and we see the adjustments that we applied earlier. I can now reduce the exposure to minus 0.8 stops rather than minus 1 stop. What's even better is that we can see the effect of both the RAW adjustments here and the curves layer I applied in the photo persona. This is great for understanding how all your adjustments are working together. But if you don't want to see that, just click the Show All Layers option to turn it off. Now, something we haven't covered yet is the overlays. These can tempt people to make the mistake we've just discussed, trying to finish the image in the developed persona. But so long as you avoid making that mistake, go ahead and watch this video next to learn about the overlay tools. Thanks for watching today and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to check out some of the other tutorials on my website. I'll see you soon for another video.